Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Along the Way podcast. My name is Lydia Kyle, and today we are going to be talking about how you can add things into your schedule without driving yourself crazy or um, having burnout. So let's jump into it. As always, thank you for hitting the subscribe button, whether you are listening on Apple or on Spotify, or you're watching on YouTube. Hi, you guys. Um, I really am loving doing the visual. The visual is really fun. It's something that's new for me, which is actually kind of relevant to today's episode, but I, I like doing the visual. It adds some extra steps for me. It adds a little bit of extra work, but I think it's a really, really cool addition to the podcast. If you are watching and you're new, episodes... Um, have been posted for this season. So there are visual episodes for season three already up. But also, if you want to listen to season one and two, they are on Spotify and Apple. So you can listen to two whole seasons of the podcast. There's just not the visual aspect for those. Also, season three is sponsored by inappropriate trucker hats. Every single week, if you're watching on YouTube, you see that I have a different inappropriate trucker hat on. If you're listening, you need to hop over to YouTube to see which one I have on. But you guys, they are an amazing small business that I love supporting. Becca has just taken this crazy idea of creating all of these inappropriate, very varying levels of inappropriate, okay? They go from G-rated to mature. I say that they should be rated like movies. Uh, most of mine are pretty appropriate to wear in public. But if you want to give a gift, whether it's a gag gift or it's just like a lifelong friendship and you've got an inside joke, you can make customs. She's got other things besides hats as well. I always like to mention that, that she has more than hats. Um, I have a bunch of her stickers and I really, really love them. They're all over my cooler. But you guys go check out Inappropriate Trucker Hats. There's a code in the description of this episode, Lydia25, and there's a direct link you can hawk over to their website and check it out. Let's jump into today talking about energy minimums. Okay, so this is one of those topics that kind of comes from my social media consulting. Like this is a topic that I talk about with my social media clients frequently. Um, it's not necessarily relevant to all of them, but it really does apply to everyone's life and it really does apply even to raising children and I know not everybody has children but I didn't realize that this was actually something that I learned um you know before you for those of you who do have kids um you know before you have your first baby you're like all about learning all of the things like you think you're gonna be the perfect parent and so you try to educate yourself as much as possible so that you can be the perfect parent. Spoiler, none of us are, and um, most of the stuff that you learn in that time period before you have the baby goes out the window. But I remember I was listening to a Focus on the Family episode, and it was talking about, but this is actually so hysterical. I was literally pregnant with my first child, and I was listening to a podcast episode about like chores and like how you teach your children to be responsible. Like this poor girl was in the womb and I was learning about how to uh, help her be more responsible. She's very responsible. Uh, maybe something happened via osmosis. But I was listening to that episode. And one of the things that they were talking about is that not only do you have to give children age-appropriate responsibilities, you also cannot add five things at once. Okay, so you give them a skill and then when they've mastered the skill, you give them the next skill. So like if you have a, a five-year-old, they, they can make their bed, right? But you can't tell them, okay, it's now your responsibility to make your bed, put your laundry away, make sure that you're, you're cleaning the table after you eat. Like you can't give them all of those responsibilities at once. You have to start with one. Then when they've mastered that skill, you add in the next one. So the example would be you have the five-year-old. It's your responsibility to make the bed every single morning when you wake up. And then when they have that skill mastered, then you say, okay, now your responsibility is to make your bed. Okay, that's still your responsibility. And I want you to wipe down the table after dinner every night. Okay, so you didn't try to add both at once. You add them in stages and steps. And then as they get older, you up the responsibilities, you up the difficulty of them, and so on and so forth. So this is something that I learned about a long time ago. Um, but I, I didn't necessarily have a term for it. The term for it is energy minimum. And I think I actually learned that from a different podcaster. 
I can't remember who it was, but I think it was something that they were talking about. This applies to our adult lives. I think it's important for raising children as well. So hopefully that was a helpful tidbit of information. But this applies to our adult lives as well, because we have a tendency where, you know, especially if you're someone like me and you have ADD and you're like, you get the, the manic moments. Um, it's a manic moment. Um, they're so fun. Um, manic moments, if you're not familiar with what that feels like, it's like where suddenly you wake up one day and you have all of the creative energy. You want to clean the entire house top to bottom. Um, you're going to go to the gym and work out for five hours. You're going to be the perfect parent. You're going to get all of the laundry done. And oh, also you're going to start a podcast. That's manic. Okay. And, and not in the sense that like some people struggle with manic episodes severely. Um, I don't struggle with them severely, but I've come to recognize that there are just certain times of the month, certain times of the year, certain days of the week where I am busier than normal. And most of that busyness is self-inflicted. And some days it feels really good to be in that kind of creative sphere. Other days I get myself in trouble. So that's what I'm talking about. But one of the ways that you can avoid the burnout is understanding your energy minimums. Don't add in more stuff. Don't add in new stuff until the old stuff is at an energy minimum. The best example that I can come up with, and this is why I said this, you know, this is something that I draw from my consulting. I always tell people, so like if I have a consulting client and they're like, well, I only have Instagram right now, but should I have, should I have TikTok? Should I have YouTube? Should I have Facebook? Should I have Lemonade? Should I have, you know, should I have all the things? Should I be doing Twitter? And I tell them, not until one thing is energy minimum. Like, no, you should not be adding in more platforms. You should not be putting more irons into the fire until Instagram, that's the example we're using, until Instagram is energy minimum. Meaning you could pretty much do it in your sleep. Like, you could wake up in the morning and posting content to Instagram is so easy that you could do it in your sleep. Okay. You've got the batch content. You've got the drafts. You know how to go in your stories. It feels seamless. Okay. When it feels that way, that's when you add in something new. That is actually how I grew my social media platform. So this isn't something that like I figured out halfway through and was like, oh shoot, I should have done it that way. No, this is actually how I did it. I started with Facebook. When Facebook became an energy minimum, I added Instagram. When Instagram became energy minimum, I added TikTok. When TikTok became energy minimum, I added XYZ, okay? So it's the same with this podcast. That's It's actually this podcast and the YouTube aspect of it is kind of part of that because I did season one and two with no YouTube, no visual. Well, because I didn't have the energy minimum. I Doing the recording wasn't super simple. After two seasons, doing the recording is pretty simple for me. I can do this. So that meant I could add something else in. And guess what? When I started doing the visual, it was difficult. It was work. Those of you who watched episode one know that I recorded it the wrong direction and I didn't have a microphone. So like, because it wasn't energy minimum, it took extra work. I'm not even sure if it will be energy minimum by the end of season three. Okay, so it still feels like an extra step. I'm not at energy minimum yet. This can apply to anything. Should you, should you be volunteering in your children's classroom while you're working a full-time job that requires a lot of your time? And um, you know, should you become the room mom for your kid's classroom? Maybe not. Maybe you shouldn't be doing that because you're going to add something in that become, makes it harder. Okay, we all want to be more involved. Should you be volunteering here? Should you be adding this small business? Um, you've got a great idea for a blog. Should you be adding that into your life? Only at, if you're at a position where all of the things that are required of you are at an energy minimum. You don't need to be stressing yourself out adding things in when you don't even have a handle on all of the things that you've already got on your plate. That's the concept of energy minimum. Essentially what you're doing 
is you're creating muscle memory. That's that's really what it boils down to. Like it's not an actual muscle. Well, I guess your brain, but you're you're creating muscle memory. So once you have muscle memory for one thing, you can add in the next thing. It's just like the example of the five-year-old child. Once they master making the bed, then you can add in the next thing because they've created that brain space. They've worked that muscle. They've created that muscle memory. It's the same for you. It's the same for you. And I will tell you this. You have permission. This is especially, I'm speaking to my people who have manic episodes like me. Um, if you haul off and make a full-blown website one day while you're having a manic episode and you make a full-blown website and you design a whole Etsy store and a week into it, you're like, this was a mistake. This was a bad idea. I do not have the ability to manage my full-time life, my family, my kids, and this brand new Etsy store that I created during a manic episode on Tuesday. Okay. It's okay to back off. All right. So if you make the mistake of having too many things, just start deciding what needs to go until a later time. All right. Because there are some people, there are some of y'all who have too many things on your plate. You have all of these goals and you have all of these dreams and you have all of these things that you want to accomplish, but you, in fact, have too many things on your plate. Like you can't add something because you can't even get a handle on the things that are already in front of you. All right. Start thinking of the things that you can let go of, maybe. Okay, prioritize. Figure out what's highest priority. What do I need to get really good at first? And it can be simple things. Like if you are drowning in laundry, maybe the thing that you need to get a handle on as far as energy minimum is figuring out a laundry routine. You guys, this will transform your life. I'm not, like I'm not blowing smoke when I tell you that if you can take a step back and have enough self-awareness to go, and I know this sounds simple, but if you can have enough self-awareness and you can step back and you can look at the pile of laundry on your couch and go, that's stressing me out. That is making me angry. That is making me anxious. That is making me nervous. And it makes me feel like a failure because I have six weeks worth of laundry piled up on my couch. Deal with that. Don't add a blog in. Don't look at the pile of laundry and go, oh, I hate that I can't get control of my laundry situation, but I'll feel better if I start a blog. Don't do that to yourself. Don't do that to yourself. Listen, I know there's some of you guys that are like mad at me right now because I'm being too honest with you, okay? If you're feeling called out, I'm sorry, but it's a fact. Now, if you can have enough self-awareness and you can look at the pile of six weeks worth of laundry and you go, you know what? I think I would feel better if I could get a grip on this laundry situation. So first thing that we do is we deal with the six weeks worth of laundry that's piled on your couch. Some of it probably needs to be rewashed, okay? Um, just a little cleanliness tip there, okay? If it sits on the couch for too long, it's going to start growing mold, even if it's dry. That's gross, okay? Moving on. So we deal with the laundry situation. Okay, now that we have the laundry off the couch... How are we not going to get there again? Okay, well, maybe you need to set up a routine where you do laundry two days a week. On Mondays and Wednesdays in the evening, I sit down with a show and I do laundry, regardless of what else is going on in the world. Okay, circumstances change. Everything happens. Like schedules are a moving target, but like you get what I'm saying. Okay, Mondays and Wednesdays, I sit down and I do laundry. I fold the laundry when it comes out of the dryer. And then I put the laundry away when I'm done with that load. Create a system. You create a system. And then once you have control of that system, you start looking at the other things. And you go, okay, I should maybe get a handle on dinners. You know, maybe you struggle with dinners. Maybe your kids play sports or maybe they have, um, you know, they have show animals and you're in the livestock industry. Maybe there's things that make it very, very hard for you to keep dinner happening. Okay. Maybe we make a schedule for that. I'm not saying that you have to have your entire life scheduled out, but listen, there are some of us that struggle with wanting to add more things into our life when the things that we already have aren't at energy minimum and your life will fluctuate. Listen, there have been times where I've had the best routines for my family and it has been like a well-oiled machine. And there have been other times where it's been utter chaos. 
Okay, that's just life. That's life. But if you have systems in place, you're building the muscle memory. You're building the muscle memory. So even if life gets chaotic for a month, heaven forbid something catastrophic happens to your family or you move or, you know, something happens, okay, you know how to get the laundry done. Maybe it's not going to happen on Monday and Wednesday nights anymore, but you know how to do it and you know you can do it. You know you're capable. You have a firm understanding of how long it takes to do it. That's the other thing that I will tell you. This isn't necessarily in regards to the energy minimum stuff, but one of the things that I've discovered is a lot of times we make mountains out of molehills when it comes to the time that it takes to do a task. We'll look at the dishwasher and we'll go, I don't have time to unload the dishwasher. It takes forever. I would rather go do this. I'm not going to unload the dishwasher. It takes too long. I got to go do this. When in reality, it really takes about two minutes to unload the dishwasher. Do you have two minutes to spare? Sometimes you don't, but most of the time you do. So unload the dishwasher and don't let it stress you out later. Okay, that's another thing. Um, I'm using laundry as the example because I know it's a lot of people's arch nemesis, but laundry is that way. It actually does not take that long to fold a load of laundry when it's one load of laundry. It takes a lot longer when it's eight loads of laundry that have piled up on the couch over a week. Okay, that's that's causing stress. Unloading a load of laundry from the dryer and folding it when it comes out of the dryer maybe takes five minutes. I'm dead serious. Call me crazy. Maybe your laundry loads are, are bigger than mine, but it really doesn't take that long to do it. So a lot of times we make mountains out of molehills when it comes to the actual time that it takes to do a task. But if you work on this whole energy minimum concept, like I'm going to create a life where I don't add extra stuff until I have my actual stuff at energy minimum. And again, day to day is a moving target. There are some days where at the end of the day, it feels like I have given my energy maximum and accomplished nothing. But don't add things in when you're at a place where everything else feels like chaos. Okay, once you have things under control, that's when you add things in. If, if your kids are exhausted when they come home from school, oh, listen, this is going to be a touch point for some people. I know you want your kids to be involved in things, but if your kids are physically exhausted when they come home from school, they are not able to get their homework done. We're not going to have a discussion about whether kids are, should have homework or not. They do. That's a fact. They do. Regardless of how you feel about it. If your kids are coming home from school and they are struggling emotionally, physically, they're tired and they're exhausted and they don't have the energy to get their schoolwork done, do you think it's really important for them to be on a travel ball team? Ask yourself that. And they may think it's really important for them to be on a travel ball team, but you're the parent and you have to ask yourself, am I doing my child a disservice by pushing them or allowing them to push themselves this hard when the rest of their life is not at an energy minimum? Okay, we really should be teaching our children these types of skills as well. And we're the adults and we're the example. So if you're in a situation where you need to get your stuff under control before you can teach your children how to have their stuff under control, obviously put your mask on first, right? You know, when you're in the airplane and the airplane is crashing, I hope you've never been in a crashing airplane, but you know, they say like, you know, put your mask on first before you assist someone else. We have to do that for our children. Okay. We have to be able to say like, I've got my mask on. I have my energy minimum. I have things in a system and, and relatively under control, barring any circumstances. Now I can teach you how to do that as well. I, I really think that a lot of times our children are put in chaotic situations because we don't have our own priorities in line. And I'm, I mean, I'm guilty. I thought about it. I'll, I'll close with this example because I don't really think this is a, a horse that I need to beat to death. Okay. I, I love baseball and softball season. And in Texas, baseball actually is a fall sport as well in a lot of places. You play it in the spring and you also play it in the fall. And then travel ball is a big thing. So um, it, you know, it's just, it's a big deal. It's a big deal. Sports are a big deal in Texas. So I love baseball and softball. Live and breathe for baseball and softball. Okay. So our kids played baseball and softball in the spring. And I found out that there's fall ball. And I saw those signs go up around town where it was like, hmm, fall ball. 
we should play fall ball. But then I had the conversation with myself where I said, listen, in the fall, Wednesday nights at church are going to start back up again. That's important. Going to Bible study at church for us is important as a family. Okay. They're going to, they're going to be doing school again in the fall. And frankly, when it's baseball season, we're barely home in the evenings. It makes dinners very difficult. Do I really want to do that again in the fall when I know I'm going to turn around and do it in the spring? Is it worth it to add that in to all of the other things? And I decided it wasn't. And guess what? My kids don't care. My kids are not coming home and telling me, Mom, I wish we were playing baseball. My friend's playing baseball. They don't care. That's not, that's not on their radar. I cared because I love baseball season. But you know what? Baseball season will be back in the fall. And we have other things going on right now. They're doing swim lessons. Okay, so we're doing, we're doing other things. Because we're not playing fall ball, I was able to enroll my kids in eight swim lessons in the month of September at the Y. How cool is that? We wouldn't have been able to do that if we had added in baseball and softball when we weren't at an energy minimum. You guys, I hope this is helpful. I hope this concept is helpful. Sometimes it's even helpful just to put a name to it. Sometimes it's helpful even just to say like, oh, no, I'm not going to start this small business because I don't have these other three things at energy minimum. When I have these three things at energy minimum, then I can start having the conversation with myself about starting that small business. Okay? Use this accordingly. Use your common sense. If your life is in other chaos right now um, because of a family emergency or because of circumstances or maybe just like your life got turned upside down, does this apply to you? Maybe not. If you're in survival right mode right now, maybe this doesn't apply to you, right? We use our common sense to know what's for us, when it's for us, and what's not for us yet. Thank you, you guys, for tuning in to another episode of the Along the Way podcast. Thank you for watching on YouTube. If you are watching on YouTube, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Hit like on this video and leave a comment. Let me know what you thought. As always, you guys, if you're listening on Spotify or Apple, hit the subscribe. Hit the five-star review if you love this episode. And if you're going to share this on social media, please tag me. You can find my handles in the description of this episode. You can get in my DMs and let me know what you think about episodes. I love feedback, and I love to see what you guys are sharing. And as always, thank you to our sponsor, Inappropriate Trucker Hats. You guys go check them out. Order some Inappropriate Trucker Hats for your upcoming holidays. Maybe you've got a family reunion coming up. These are the best possible thing that you could do to make people laugh, and it will make a memory. So go check out Inappropriate Trucker Hats. I will see you guys back next week.